Today's celebration, I will ask everyone nicely to please turn off your cell phone and other electrical devices. Thank you. My name is George Petrunich, and I am your commentator for today's Mass, which is the second Sunday of Advent. We extend a warm welcome to all those who are visiting our church today. On this second Sunday of Advent, we begin to shift our focus from Christ coming at the end of time to Jesus coming in history. But we who live in the present day should know the coming of the Lord in our own lives and eagerly anticipate his presence. As we deepen our Advent celebration today, let us become more aware of all the ways that the Lord can come among us and prepare for his coming by our repentance and prayer. Our celebrant of today's Mass is Father Jerry Stack. Our Eucharistic ministers are Mr. and Mrs. Mike and Marissa Salinas. Our lector is Elizabeth Rodriguez. Our altar server is Andre Lopez. Our choir director is Art Lopez and Company. The opening song is Arise, Come Sing in the Morning. It is in Book 1, page 6. And our Mass intentions for today are for Gracie O'Keen and Lupe Torres. Please stand and begin our celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We begin with the blessing of the Advent wreath. Gracious God, be with us as we ask your blessing upon this wreath and upon our entire family. The green of this wreath is a sign of the hope that we have because of the coming of your Son, Jesus. The candles are a reminder that you are always with us, lighting our way. We thank you for the blessings of this Advent. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. We thank you for the light of your love in our family. Let this light and love extend over the entire earth. Let us pray. O Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, come and save your people, joy of every heart strength of those who are poor. Come quickly to help us. And now let us take a moment to call to mind our sins 
and ask God's forgiveness in order to prepare for the celebration of this Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our le learning of the heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the miter that displays the glory of, e of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever. The peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children, gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, born aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter. 
and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great things, things for us. us. We, we are, are filled, filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Like any good historian, Luke gives us the setting for the beginning of the ministry of John the Baptist, really for the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, by giving us some times, some places, and the names of important people who were ruling the various areas of what was then called, would have been called Palestine. And after listing all these important people, he says, the word of the Lord came to somebody who is not really well known, in fact, was probably considered unimportant in his day, namely John the Baptist, who was out in the desert. And Luke is very careful to portray John the Baptist as one of the prophets, and in fact, the last of the line of the Old Testament prophets. Uh, it takes place, he, his, his ministry takes place in the desert and it was in the desert that God formed his people and made a covenant with them under the great prophet Moses. And he is described as fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, and so on. So John the Baptist is very clearly seen as one of the prophets. And his, he is involved in a symbolic washing or cleansing, a bap what's called a baptism, although it's not the Christian sacrament of baptism. It was a ritual that led to repentance and the forgiveness of sins. So John the Baptist was out there calling people back to God, calling people to turn back to the Lord and accept forgiveness. Now for Luke, repentance and forgiveness are at the heart of the gospel. And if we, had, uh, if we go some 20 chapters forward, the very last chapter, in fact, almost the very last verses of the Gospel of Luke, listen to what Jesus tells his disciples. This is after his resurrection and just before his ascension. Jesus says, Thus it is written that the Messiah should suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So Jesus' commission to the disciples, to the church, to us, the, his disciples today, is that repentance and the forgiveness of sins be preached to all the nations. So this for Luke is at the heart of Jesus' message. The Greek word that is used that we translate repentance means more than just feeling a little bit sorry or saying I'm sorry. For example, if you bump into somebody, say, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. But the word really means to have a change of mind, a change of heart, to really have a new outlook, to go in a new direction. And it often is used to translate a Hebrew word that talks about a real inner, inner sense of, of sorrow and pity. So all of these things are involved in, this, in the idea of repentance. Uh, it's, it's really a, a deep inner sorrow for not living up to what God wants us to be or, and to what God wants us to do, and a desire to turn and to change direction in our lives. Likewise, the word that we translate forgiveness really means, uh, really uh, has the connotation of releasing somebody or taking somebody out of slavery, out of bondage just as the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, were led out of slavery by Moses, the great prophet, and as they were led back from the exile by the Lord, back to the land of Israel. So the poetic imagery that we've heard in the prophets, the, those two selections from the prophets, the first reading from the prophet Baruch and then that selection from Isaiah that's in the gospel, really reinforce this image of repentance and forgiveness reinforce the concepts, the reality. Uh, when a king would visit back in, in those days, they would uh, send people out ahead of him to make sure that the road was prepared so that he wouldn't be jo jostled around in his chariot or carriage or whatever uh, by potholes and, and uh, rough places in the road. And it's, it's important for us to remember 
that when Baruch is talking about this, and Isaiah as well, it's the Lord who is taking the initiative to make the way straight and smooth and level so that the people might return to the Lord. So it's God who is taking the initiative. God is the one who is saying, prepare a, a straight path, uh, level out those valleys, bring down those mountains, so that my people may have an easy way to come back to me or to come back to their homeland. So when John the Baptist is seen as fulfilling this prophecy, calling people to do that, he is reminding the people that God has taken the initiative to call them back to level out the, the, uh, the, the rough places in the road. And in fact, the imagery is really kind of exaggerated. I mean, if somebody important came to visit, uh, I'm sure that they would try to make the, the roads as nice as possible. But God is saying, I will make sure that the valleys have been leveled and the mountains have been brought low so that my people might have a smooth path. So it's, a, it's an image of God's overwhelming love for his people. So the imagery also call, calls us to cooperate with God in preparing the way. God makes the command, God takes the initiative, but we are called to respond, to cooperate with the Lord in making those paths straight, making the crooked paths straight, making the rough places plain, and filling in those valleys and bringing down those mountains. So what might that mean in the context of John the Baptist and his call to the people, the call to us, to repentance and forgiveness? Well, perhaps we might ask ourselves, where are the valleys in my life that need to be filled in? Where in my life am I not living up to what God wants me to be, what God wants me to do? Perhaps, uh, for example, I could be more generous, more patient, more understanding. That, those are valleys that the Lord wants us to fill in so that our journey to the Lord might be smoother, that we might come draw nearer to the Lord, especially this season. What about those mountains that are spoken of? Well, I th mountains are obstacles. Anybody who builds a road knows that a mountain uh, requires a lot of extra work so that the grades aren't too steep. Sometimes you have to build a tunnel. So what are the mountains in my life? What are the obstacles that I have put up to God in my life? Or perhaps I've also put up obstacles, mountains, to other people by the things that I have done or the things that I have not done. So let's ask ourselves, might I need to let go and change my attitudes to change uh, the way that I relate to other people? Perhaps I have been remiss. Perhaps I, have, I need to uh, make those changes because what I have, the way that I am living is an obstacle, a mountain in the path of other people. Perhaps it's a rigid outlook. Uh, an unbending outlook, an unbending way of looking at things or dealing with things or with people that has become an obstacle. Maybe a lack of forgiveness, a hardness of heart has become an obstacle, a mountain in my life. So I think that the, those, that those wonderful readings about from Baruch and also that reading that is quoted of, uh, and used to describe John the Baptist in uh, the uh, gospel today uh, are, offer us an opportunity to reflect on our lives and on how God is calling us to repentance that leads to forgiveness, that leads to uh, reconciliation and to peace. Perhaps during this season, we might reflect on those words of St. Paul to the Philippians that we heard in the second reading and make a, a kind of a paraphrase, taking those words and making them into a prayer, something like this. Lord, may my love increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that I may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God.
heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate, he suffered at the end of his and rose again on the third day, and according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is the door of the Lord of Fire, the source of the prophets. I believe in one holy act of the Apostolic Church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembered by God, we now recall in prayer the mountains and depths that challenge God's people. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may set aside our differences and focus on our mission of preparing the world for it, he is coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who run vast multinational corporations, that they remember their duty to serve the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Jewish friends and neighbors, as they celebrate Hanukkah, the great festival of lights, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their way in the desert of sin, that with God's help they may find their way back to the country of freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of Gracie O'Keen and Lupe Torres, who are deceased, may be judged in mercy on the last day, and may all of us, the living and the dead, rise in glory and grace on that great day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers we hold in our hearts Join with those of Our Lady of Guadalupe and all the saints in light are heard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the blessings that we have received and for which we sometimes are ungrateful. We ask you to hear these prayers which we make to you this afternoon. We ask you to help us to prepare the way for you and for your son by listening to the words of John the Baptist calling us to a change of heart. This we ask through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Pardon?
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise to which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope and Dale our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we ask our Father to forgive our sins and bring us to forgive those who sin against us. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. King and Song is found in book one, number 59, You Are Near. That's book one, number 59, You Are Near. Please join us. Yeah. 
Uh, as we begin our second collection, I have a few announcements. Uh, CSA, make sure that you're caught up on your CSA because it's the end of the month, or the end of the year really now. Uh, we also have the raffle, make sure that you're handing in all the tickets for the raffle because the raffle will be the 12th and it's going to be at 9 uh, p.m. is the drawing. So please, if you have any outstanding raffle tickets that you sold, please turn them in. Our Christmas Mass, our Christmas Eve Mass, I should say. Our Christmas Eve Mass is not going to be held at midnight. Please check the bulletin because they're not sure if it's going to be 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. And confessions are all this week, Monday through Friday, before the novena at 6 p.m. So confessions at 6 p.m. every night before the novena. And that'll be it, and enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.